praise the lord praise the lord well i'll give thanks to him because he is so wonderful the lord is so wonderful 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 jesus is to me and we serve indeed a wonderful god we serve the rock the god of all ages the god of all ages he is not a god that is far off but he says am i not a god that is near and at hand i am not a far off he is not a he is not a god that is way far away from us he may be far away from us uh, physically uh, but spiritually where his spirit is concerned is very close to us and he says i will not just be with you but i shall be in you what an honor to have the holy spirit residing inside of our lives and that just makes us to yield to the lord uh, no matter how hard we try to resist resist the working of god no matter how hard we try to resist but it's ultimately god who prevails god prevails and the more we resist the more problems the more we resist the more pains the more suffering but the sooner we yield and surrender and break before the lord the more the joy that fills our heart and that's what god is trying to do in the lives of every one of the elect if you think you are the elect be ready to be broken if you think you are a child of god be ready to walk the narrow way if you think you are chosen by god get ready to be rejected by people that's what it entails that's what salvation entails it just makes us free from from all the tags from all the bondages that once held us in the world uh, that people held us with uh, that systems held us with that that whatever held us with the lord breaks us from all those bonds and and creates a new bond with us through his holy spirit now is between me and god is between me and him is between me and the savior and the, i really appreciate the lord for the first prelude that we were that the band played here and we were singing and such a wonderful wonderful words to the to that song a sacrifice of praise what can i bring what can we bring to god saints today you can bring all your money you have you can bring everything you can bring your property you can bring the whole world the richest man in the world can bring all his wealth to the lord today but but it doesn't count with the lord the lord says the heaven is mine the earth is my the heaven is my throne the earth is my footstool if the earth is the lord's footstool what can we give him out of his footstool is there anything you can give to him from his footstool we live in his footstool what can he give him and the psalm says what can i uh, give him the rock of all the god of all the ages for a sacrifice what shall i bring shall i bring a bull an ox a goat what can i bring what what will he accept shall i bring 30% instead of giving 10% if i give him 50% will he be happy what what can i bring and thou art great and there is none beside thee and i'll bring to him a sacrifice of praise he tells me don't give me anything i dwell in your praise the lord dwells in the praises of his saints why not we praise god saints and let the god let the god of heaven dwell here among us and in our hearts and the first verse says um i i the lord is nigh to the broken heart it's very true saints the lord is nigh to the broken heart and not to not to the not 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 to the one whose heart is intact when i say broken heart i talk about more spiritually broken not physically or heart breaking into pieces no there is a phrase that we use oh my heart is broken right we use that phrase a lot when someone hurts us um uh, when someone uh someone mistreats us or or, or doesn't is not faithful to us we say oh my heart is broken uh but it's but it's not that broken also it's not like that because somebody somebody hates you your heart is broken the other person loves you your heart is in tatters once again no it's not that kind of heart breaking okay this is something that david said create in me a clean heart for god 
a broken heart and a contrite spirit, O Lord, you will not despise. And that's the broken heart. A heart that is broken means a heart that has been dealt by God in all the all the compartments, all the areas of that heart. Not just one portion of the heart. Not just half the heart. But all my heart has been given to the Lord. Let him deal with it the way he wants to deal with it. Let him work on every area of my life. My heart is not just yielded to God, but now my heart is broken. My heart is broken. I Broken means it, 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 it's not just humility, but it's humility, it's meekness, and the poor in spirit. It's all the beatitudes put together. That's a broken heart. He's poor, that man is poor in spirit, that man is meek, that man is lowly, that man is hunger and thirsting after righteousness, that man, that man or that woman, whoever he is, for them, God is first. And when God works in a different way, I don't get upset. I don't get upset. There comes a time in my life where I stop getting upset on things, and I stop getting in fits of anger, I stop screaming, I stop shouting, I stop blaming. There comes a time where I only yield to God and God alone. That is a heart that's indeed broken by God, not by any man. Many men, many people break our hearts. But when God breaks us, that breaking is for good. And this book is full of men and women whom God broke. There is no anointing without the breaking. There may be a blessing without the breaking. I'm not talking about a blessing. The Lord breaks the stony, uh, the Lord blesses the stony hearted also. The Lord blesses. So just because I have some blessings in my life doesn't mean that God is happy with me. Blessings are not a sign of God's approval. Brokenness is a sign of God's approval. It's not how much I have, it's how much I am broken. And what can we bring to him? Romans 12 says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. That is what the Lord needs. He doesn't need an, an ox or a bull or a goat. Oh, he needs our body. He needs that, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual worship. One, 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 uh, one uh, translation says. Reasonable worship is what is what King James. Reasonable service is what King James says. But one translation says, which is your spiritual worship. And what can we bring to God today? I'll bring my body. I'll bring my eyes on the altar. I'll put my tongue on the altar. I'll put my hands on the altar. I'll put my feet on the altar. Where does Paul say in 1 Corinthians 12, isn't it, where he says, the last verse, where is it 1 Corinthians 12, where it says, therefore I bring my body under subjection. Uh, 1 Corinthians, or it's 2 Corinthians. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, let me check. Uh, no. Uh, it's, uh, just let me give you a scripture. Yes, 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9 and the last verse, verse 27. It says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. What does this mean? This You can, you can compare this verse to Romans 12, verse 1. It's the same. What does it mean to bring under, keep under my body and bring it in subjection? The Living Bible, if I'm not mistaken, the Living Bible on it reads that I make my body to do what it should do, not what it wants to do. Did you get it? I make my body to do what it should do, not what it wants to do. I make my eyes to see what it should see, not what it wants to see. I make my tongue to say what it should say, not what it wants to say. Are you understanding? 
I make my feet to go to the place that it should go, not where it wants to go. I make my mind to get those thoughts what it should have, not what it wants to have. That's brokenness. And that to happen, that is the most, I'm not saying, when I say difficult for God, don't misunderstand me, nothing is difficult to God. But to break a man takes longer for God than even to divide the Red Sea. Put you all, put yourself in that example. Are you broken? No? No, none of us are broken completely. But how long did it take God to divide the Red Sea? How long did it take God to resurrect the dead? How long did it take God to create the universe? How long did it take Jesus to turn the water to wine? How long? A moment. A moment. But to take a man that's led by sin and to make that man whole again takes a lifetime. No man or a woman is broken in a day. The process may start in a day, but that process takes a very long time because it's not just God who's responsible for that. It's my responsibility also to partner with God in breaking me. Well, if God wants, he'll break me. God wants to break me, but I, do I want to be broken? Is the question. That's the question. And we need to stop, uh, stop just I hate to say this again and again, but we just need to stop looking at things the way we've been looking at it for a long time. Let's get a new vision from God. Let's get a new perspective from God. If only I could see this world the way you see. Enough of looking at it the way we've been looking at it for years now. Enough at looking at one another the way we looked at one another for years now. Let's start looking at one another the way God wants to look, or the way God looks at, looks at all of us. And that takes, and breaking takes a lot of waiting. We need to wait. Breaking doesn't happen in a day. Breaking takes a lot of waiting. We need to wait on God. And the most important thing during waiting is our attitude. Many people wait, but many people wait in bitterness. Well, I'm waiting for my prayers, I'm waiting for my prayers to answer, but their heart is rotten. It's filled with filth, it's filled with malice and hatred and envy and jealousy, but they are still waiting. So there are two people who wait on God. One type of people are who wait with a hard heart, with a bitter heart, with a bitter, sour spirit. The other one, the other, the other group of people are the ones who are yielding to God and who, are, who, who don't mind God breaking them into pieces while they are waiting. They don't mind. Uh, they don't mind if they are hurt. They don't mind if they are taking advantage of. They know this this person is taking advantage of them. They know it. They know it. But Jesus said, if someone asks you a coat, give him your cloak also. Because if you believe that God can take care of everything and He's a sovereign God, you also need to believe nobody can take advantage of you more than God wants them to take. No matter who that person is, every person has been given a limit, a boundary that they cannot surpass. And that boundaries are set by God, not by you and me. And the scripture says here in Isaiah, Chapter 14, verse 27 onwards. It says, Why sayest thou, O Jacob? He's, he's talking to Israel. Why are you complaining? When will you stop complaining, Jacob? When will you stop complaining, Israel? Why do you think that your ways are right and my ways are wrong? When will you start stop complaining and start believing God? He says, as, uh, why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest to Israel, my way is hid from the Lord? Oh, well, the Lord doesn't look at me. He doesn't care for me. You know, nowadays the Lord doesn't hear my prayer. And the way the Lord is dealing with me is not right. You may not use the same words, but when we complain and grumble, we are, we are, we are indi indirectly saying that God, does, God is not just. 
He doesn't know what's happening to me. He's unaware of my situation and my condition. He doesn't know if only God knew what I'm going through. That's what God's telling Israel. My, why you are speaking that my way is hid from the Lord, my judgment is passed over from God? Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of this earth, fainteth not? Neither is weary. He's not weary with his children. He doesn't get tired loving you. We get tired loving one another. 15, 20, 25, 30, 40 years of marriage and we get tired loving our spouse. We get tired. God has not gotten tired loving you. No matter how old you've been now. He still loves you with that same love that he first loved you. He doesn't get weary, neither there is searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases their strength. He lifts up people. He knows who to put where. He knows the people who are faint once upon a time. He gives them strength. And he says, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail, but now here's the, here's the formula. This is what is very important in all of our lives. And this is what I'm telling you confidently the Lord is teaching each and every one of us here to wait. Wait. Wait on the Lord, but they that wait upon the government upon the system, about, uh, upon the economy, upon their office, their organization, their, their whatever it is. Who are you waiting on today? Oh, if only, if only that my boss promotes me. If only, if only I get that new order for my business. If only I get that funding for my business, whatever it is. If only, if only I, so who are you waiting on? Who are we waiting on? People? If only he comes and falls at my feet. If only she comes and falls at my feet. If only. So who are you waiting on? Let's start to wait on the Lord. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. The reason why we have lost our strength, our zeal and our desire to serve God because we have stopped waiting on God. We are waiting on people and things. And the ones that who wait on people and things will never be strengthened. Our strength comes from God. Let's start waiting on the Lord. And the attitude while we are waiting is very, very very important because it's in the waiting that the breaking happens. It's not when things are going good, everything's wonderful, everything is in abundance, people are with you, people are respecting you, everything's happening. That's not when the breaking happens. The breaking happens when we lack things and when we are waiting. And when we lack things and when we are waiting, let the waiting be on God and God alone. Not on people and things and situations to change. Let's stop questioning God and let's stop, let's stop questioning and let's stop that, let's stop having that unrest in our hearts. The anxiety, the stress that, that, that's moving inside our hearts and, 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 and let's accept what the Lord wants to do with us. Let's yield on the potter's wheel. Let's not jump out of the potter's wheel. Let the potter break that clay, moisten it with the water of the Holy Ghost and put me back on the wheel. It's okay. It's okay. Let the potter have the way. Shall the clay tell unto the potter, why have you made me thus? Can we question God? And even after knowing this, we still keep questioning God day in and day out. And I may be waiting today, but I'm waiting with complaining. And that's not right. Job was waiting. 
Job was waiting, but with so much of complaint. And God also waited. If you think between, between us and God, who can wait more? Who has more long suffering? God. So in, in competition with God, I want to win. It's better that I yield. It's better that I submit. It's better that I stop complaining and go through the process of breaking. And even God waited for Job till Job could have a revelation about himself. We may have the revelation about Daniel. We may have the revelation about the book of Revelation. We may have all the doctrines right and the truth right. We may have everything right. But if I, have, if I don't have a revelation about myself, I'm lost. Do I have a revelation about my spirit? Has God revealed me the dirt and the filth that's in my spirit? If only we can see it. Our crying to God will change. We won't cry and ask God for things then. We will ask God for himself. We will ask God, God give me yourself. I don't need anything else. I don't mind. I don't care if my prayers are answered or not. But I want the mind of Christ to be formed in me. I want your love to be shed abroad in my heart. I want to have the life of Christ seen through me. That's what should be our number one prayer request. Not give me a good job, not give me a good wife, not give me a good house or a big car. That's okay. That comes down the list in the Lord's Prayer. First is God, let your name be hallowed. Let your name be hallowed. I want to revere your name of God. I want to respect your name. I want to see to it that I don't bring blasphemy to your name of God. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And let thy will be done in my life as it is done in heaven. Then, then give me today my daily bread. But our daily bread comes above God in all of our prayers. And when Job changed his prayer, God answered his prayer. When Job was broken, God answered his prayer. Another life about Jacob. Look how God dealt with Jacob. How did he start his life? He started his life as a trickster, as a supplanter. What reputation did Jacob have? Everybody looked at Jacob as a deceiver. That's what his father named him, Jacob. The meaning of Jacob is deceiver, supplanter. That's the meaning of the name Jacob. He was named and he was true to his name. It's very important what we name our children. A better name, the scripture says in Proverbs, uh, a better name is, be is good than, uh, can someone find the scripture and just put it up. A good name is always better than, than some other. A good name is better than precious ointment. Very important what we name our children. Because they can stand true to that name that you named them with. And it says, it says that he was named Jacob. Jacob means deceiver, trickster, and this. And, and this happens to be the story of his life. You see his life, he tricked his brother, he tricked his father. And if you read the story, even after, even, he, even after he tricked them, he deceived his brother, took his birthright, deceived his father, took the blessing. And even after doing all these things, he still saw a vision and saw a ladder coming down from heaven. Didn't he? Didn't he? Yes, even after doing all those things, he was still blessed, not with one but two wives. <laughs> That's, I'm not saying go and marry and have a second wife, no, but he, he also was deceived. He was given Leah first and then Rich. Even after, when he was a trickster, he still had a lot of flocks. And everything that Laban had, Laban said, belongs to you. He was blessed without being broken. So blessings always doesn't mean that I am broken. Come on. Jacob was blessed but not broken. And we, when we are 
blessed. We stop yielding to the Lord. That's why God doesn't bless some of us. Because he knows if he blesses us, we are not ready yet to handle that blessing and we may just drift away. But first, a child of God, God will always prepare him to receive the blessing. There's always a preparation before the giving, before the, before the blessing. And here, he was not prepared, but he was blessed with everything. He was God-fearing, but seeking his own. Oh, I'm God-fearing. Everyone's, everyone sitting here is God-fearing. But we still seek our own. We still seek our own. It's only me, my wife, my son, his wife, before and no more. It's only us first. But we are God-fearing. We fear the Lord. But we are not yielding to the Lord. And he gets a vision of the ladder. He gets, he, 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 his prayers are answered. He gets blessed financially. He has more flocks, more property than even his boss. So one lesson we get from this is just because we are prospering doesn't mean that everything is okay and God's happy with us. But underneath of all this, Jacob knew that he got everything by deceiving. The guilt was always there in Jacob. That's why when he saw Esau, he wanted to run. But he couldn't run because God had broken his hip. And he sent his wives ahead and stayed behind. Let's come to Genesis 32. This is I'm there. Now after all this blessing, after everything, after he gets all the flocks and he has all property and has everything, here in Genesis 32 and verse 24, Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint and he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for, I, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go. Je now you need to understand when Jacob's making the statement, I will not let thee go, he's already broken his hip. His hip is out of joint. His hip is broken. But for Jacob, more than the pain, it was the presence of God that was important. There comes a time in our life we don't, we don't care about what pain we are going through, but what we need is only God. And I hope and pray that stage comes in each and every one of our lives early and soon. Not when we are on the deathbed. He was almost 65, 70 years old when his hip was broken. And you know, during those times, 65, 70 means today is 25, 30 years old. Because Jacob lived for 180 years, if I'm not mistaken. 180 years Jacob lived for. And for, more, for, for around 80 to 100 years, he was limping every day. He walked with a stick. Imagine a young man, 25, 30 year old man, walking here in this church with a stick. How, how, how will you feel? Isn't it embarrassing for that young man to walk with a stick? We, we have older men and women that don't want to walk with a stick because they think they'll be embarrassed. We have 80 year old people that don't want to take a stick and walk because they feel they'll be embarrassed. But this man, and says, no, I don't, I don't, I, I don't want, I, don't, I know nothing going to happen to some of you even after hearing this. But I know there are few that will be worked on by the Lord today. I know that. I am speaking to those few. And he was walking with that stick for about 80 years, 80 to 100 years. But here, when Jacob said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. See what? It wasn't Jacob wrestling with God that made God to bless him. It's not the wrestling. It's not just the praying, 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 praying. 
It's holding on to the Lord even when you are broken, that brings the blessing. That brings a spiritual blessing. He didn't leave the angel when he was broken. Oh, and he didn't leave his hands off from the angel when he was broken. But he continued to hold on and said, I'm not going to leave you unless you bless me. What now 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 one question. What did Jacob mean when he said, unless you bless me? Now, what else did Jacob want? Was there anything worldwide what he was lacking? Did he want a big house? Did he want a big land? Did he want a big family? He had everything this world could give him. So what blessing was he asking for? It was not worldly blessings. He says, he said, I want you to bless me in a sense that I want you to change my attitude. Change my spirit. That's the blessing he's asking for. That's the blessing he's asking for. That's why the scriptures are so wonderful. That's why the Bible lets us know that Jacob was blessed. He had everything. So he wasn't asking for a for a, for a for a blessing of healing or a blessing of of a house or a car or a, or a scooter or or a, a nice job. He was the boss. He was the boss. He had nothing lacking. But now, when he was asking for a blessing, that just meant, and God understood it, that the blessing that Jacob was asking for was not worldly, but a spiritual blessing. That, Lord, change my heart. Change my worldly nature. Change me, O God. And then the an angel asks him, what is your name? Now, Jacob, now you've come to the point. Okay? Many years ago, one more person asked him, what is your name? And he said, my name is Esau. Who asked him that? His father. And said, I am Esau. But now, when Jesus asked him, what is your name? He didn't tell a lie. He said, I am Jacob. I am the deceiver. I am the trickster. I am the supplanter. And this moment, this man was broken. When will we be honest to God in our prayers? Only when we are ready to be broken. And it means breaking and waiting takes, gives a lot of pain. I've been to the breaking, I've been to the waiting. It causes a lot of pain, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. It's not easy to wait on the Lord. Many times you are tempted to just give up and, and wait on something and somebody. He says, my name is the deceiver. I got all this blessing that I have today. I got it by deceiving. And then God not only changes his name, but gives him a new identity. But God changes his heart. And this happened because he wanted, because he... Because he wanted something more. He didn't want anything this world had to offer him. He wanted something that only God could give him. This happened because he wrestled. He wrestled, but he held on even after he felt the pain. He didn't grumble about the pain. He didn't murmur about the pain. Pain didn't take the front seat. Pain was always taking the back seat. And his worldly nature changing took the front seat. He wasn't, he wasn't taken, he wasn't there asking for sympathy because he was in pain. The pain didn't matter to Jacob, the change mattered to Jacob. And unless we come to a stage where the change matters to us the most, we are not ready to be blessed by God spiritually. Is the perseverance that we need in our hearts to go to God, not just for the worldly blessings or financial blessings. Is the perseverance that you go to God day in and day out, day in and day out, to be blessed with a new heart, a new attitude, a new spirit, a broken heart, and a contrite spirit, O Lord, thou shalt not despise. The sacrifices of God, what are it? 
are a broken heart and a contrite spirit. That's the sacrifice that the Lord needs. That's what the Lord is looking for. Jacob said, I want a new attitude towards my family. I want a new attitude even towards you. I want a new attitude towards my job, towards my boss, towards my maids, towards the ones who work under me. Jacob said, there are many maids and maid servants I have. I, have to, I want to have a new attitude even towards them. I want to have a new attitude towards the church, towards the pastor, towards my brothers and sisters in church. Lord, give me a new spirit, a new attitude. I want that, O oh God. I want a new identity. Let's keep this picture of Jacob before our eyes every day. Because we can be like Jacob. That in the worst broken moment of our lives, even when it's paining, even when we think that it's going beyond us, oh, I can't bear it anymore, I can't take it anymore. Why is God letting me go through this? Since he's letting you and me go through it because he wants to break us. And in the worst moment of our lives, when you feel like just leaving God and start doing your own thing and trying to get your own way, in that worst moment, saints, let's hold on to the Lord for some more time. Let's yield to the Lord. Let's say, God, I surrender. Do what you want, O oh God. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not retaliating anymore. There is nothing that will come out of my mouth, O oh God. There is nothing but whatever it takes, O oh God, to break me. Break me, God. And I say, it's not easy, saints. It's not easy. I still make statements when I'm frustrated, which I shouldn't make. I still have thoughts in my mind that I shouldn't have. But my number one desire is to have the mind of Christ and to have a love filled in my heart just like Jesus had. I don't care whether God blesses me or not with all the worldly things, but I know if He blesses me with the mind of Christ in a broken spirit, He'll never despise me. He'll never despise my prayers. He'll never let me go away from His presence. Let's not do that, saints. Let's not leave the Lord when it pains, when it hurts us, when our ego is hurt, when our pride is crushed. Oh my God, the most painful thing is when our pride is crushed. That's the most painful thing. Nothing else compares to that pain. When someone disrespects us, when someone tells us to do a thing that is a mean thing, when my pride is crushed, that pain can't be compared to any other physical pain. Because as men and women, we are used to, we are used to go through physical pain. Our body is made that we go through physical pains a lot. But when our pride is crushed, there's no pain greater than that pain. Every woman suffers the pain when she goes, when, when she delivers a child. That pain is, I mean, we men can't even think about it. We can't. There's no man that can think about that pain that a woman goes through when she's delivering a child. It's a second birth. But you know what's more painful than that pain? Is when God tries to make me humble and crush my pride. When he tells me to go to that person, and get things right even when it is not your fault. And that's painful. What do we do when we are broken is what matters. Many people are being broken, but they are bitter. Bitterly broken. I am talking about being broken beautifully. Beautifully broken. That's a good title for this message. Beautifully broken. Not bitterly broken. Some people are broken, but they are so bitter and sour inside. My God, if only I had my way, I would have given them left, right, and center. I'm not talking about being bitterly broken. I'm talking about beautifully broken. When there is no resentment, 
There is nothing. Because it's not that person that's harming me. It's God allowing that person to harm me so that I can be beautifully broken. No one is no one is responsible for your and my situation. No one. No one is responsible for the situation that we all are in. Are we holding on to God when we are broken? That's the question. I don't know, I'm at, there's a lot of things that I would like to say. But this man, Jacob, he is one of my heroes in the Bible. One of my heroes. What a, what a, what a past he had. What a bad past he had. What bad years, the first 70 years of his life, it was bad. But the remaining 80 years of his life, he lived it as a broken man, without any bitterness. Jacob was broken, but he was beautifully broken. Moses was broken, but he was beautifully broken. Abraham was broken, he was beautifully broken. The most, the most best example for that is Jesus. He was broken, but how beautifully he was broken on the cross. Wasn't he broken beautifully? He says, he, before being broken on the cross, he says, this is my body which is already broken. He didn't care about being broken physically. That man was broken spiritually even before he went on the cross. Because a night prior to his crucifixion, he takes the piece of bread and says, take, eat. This is my body, which will be broken for you. What did he say? This is my body, which will be broken tomorrow, which will be broken after 12 years. He said, this, take, eat. This is my body already broken. Jesus was a broken man, but he was broken beautifully. And it's hard to find men and women in our day today who are beautifully broken. You don't find those men. You'll find one in a million. Not even hundreds, not even thousands. One in a million, 10 lakhs, that's beautifully broken by God. And Jacob had a permanent limping after, after he was broken. There was this reminding him of, of, of the brokenness, but also reminded him of a permanent change of heart, a permanent change of nature. See, God is not interested in breaking us so that we can stagger and we can be embarrassed. God doesn't want to break us to embarrass us. God wants to break us so that he can not just bless us, but then make us a blessing. Jacob was blessed, but the Lord God didn't keep him just being blessed. Jacob was blessed, but he blessed all his 12 sons. God didn't just bless Jacob, but made Jacob a blessing. And only broken men and women can be a blessing. No one, no one else. No one else. Because God wants us to have the nature and the image of His Son. Here, here in Isaiah 40, we were in the scripture. Let me, let me bring this message to a close. There are many other things, but maybe I'll continue next time. But here it says, they that wait upon the Lord. Isaiah, Isaiah 30, 40 and verse 31. They that wait. This word wait. This word wait here. The Hebrew word wait. It implies, it's uh, the primitive root of this word is bind or intertwine. You know, uh, how they make those big ropes, those thick ropes, how are they made? With one, 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 one big rope or one strand of rope? No, there are many strands of rope that are that are intertwined one among the other. And more the ropes, more the stronger. More the strands of rope, the more stronger that ropes become. So this word weight 
is like they that wait on the Lord means they that bind themselves or intertwine themselves with the Lord. That's the meaning of this word wait. Kava, if I'm not mistaken, Q-A-V-A, that's the Hebrew word, Kava. It means intertwine, to bind. And when we are waiting on the Lord, every moment we wait, every day we wait, we bind ourselves to the Lord tighter and tighter and tighter. And that's why I talked about strength. That rope will be stronger than any other person waiting on the Lord with bitterness. But when we wait on the Lord with the right spirit, we are intertwining ourselves with God and we are making our mind stronger. When God's trying to break us, saints, let's yield. Let's give in to the Lord. Let's hold more tightly to the Lord. That's what Jacob did, right? He was broken. But what did he do? He held on tight. He held on tight. He didn't let his hands go off and, and, and hold his hip. Oh my hip, oh my hip. What did he do? He said, do whatever you want. I am not leaving you. Can you have that attitude? God, do whatever you want. I am not leaving you. Unless you give me the mind of Christ. I am not leaving you. Whether you heal me, whether you deliver me, whether you do, do those things or not, I am not leaving you unless you give me the mind of Christ. What a life to live that way. It takes away all grumbling, all murmuring, all complaining, all malice, bitterness. It just takes away everything. You can't do it on your own sense. I'm telling you, no matter how much you do it, you'll do it for a day or a two or one month or two months. You cannot do it. I cannot do it on my own. We need help. We need help. And the Holy Spirit is called the helper, comforter, helper, paraclete, cleat. Helper, advocate, we need help. And God said, I provide you the helper. Take help. Take help. And hold on to me strong. Hold on to me stronger. Show the right spirit. No matter what, no matter what, every opportunity of being mistreated is a wonderful opportunity to show the right spirit. Let's, how many opportunities... I have missed in my life till now millions of opportunities. When I had the opportunity to show the right spirit, but I, my flesh took over. And I hope it's the same with you, right? There was an opportunity to show the right spirit, but no. No, I am not giving in. You are not giving in to that person, my friend. You are giving in to God. Don't give in to people. Give in to God. Stand back, Moses said. Don't do anything. Stand back and see the salvation of the Lord. God said, this is not your battle. The battle is the Lord's. I'll fight it for you. If only you yield yourself to me. Be blessed by me and be beautifully broken by me. Break, break beautifully. And then the pot that is formed, some are vessels of clay, some are vessels of silver, some are vessels of gold. Vessels of clay will not be in the bride. Vessels of silver will not be in the bride. Vessels of gold will be in the bride because the gold goes into more hot fire than the clay. And it's beautifully wrought. One of the Psalms talks about the king's, the queen, the king's daughter and her raiment. It is beautifully broken, beautifully threaded with so many, so many so many nice threads of silk and gold is weaved. It's, her, her, her inside is, is curiously wrought work. When God's working something in you, let's not turn away from that. Let's be beautifully broken. She shall be brought into the king in raiment of needlework. Needlework, not machine work. Needlework takes time. The devil wants you to, you to tell the God, put me on a machine, finish it off soon. God says, no, I don't have a machine. I have a needle. So don't move. Stay there. 
let me complete my needle work and it will be beautifully broken and beautifully stitched. That's the king's thought. She will be brought in a raven of needle of the virgins and her companions that follow her. All other people around me, they will never understand. How can he be so sweet? How can you tell me to do this? How can I do this? The, the, the king's daughter will say, because I have done it. There is no harm in being humble. There is no harm in coming down. There is no harm, my friend. Fall on the rock. Break. Let the blessing come back. And the blessing will be more than what you are asking for. Running away from the problem is not going to save us. We will meet with a bigger problem. And a worse problem. Staying there, allowing God to work and being beautifully broken is one of the solution. Thank God for a church. Amen. amen and amen. Wonderful, isn't it? Wonderful, isn't it? Wonderful book, wonderful life, wonderful and beautifully broken by God. And God, He's a masterpiece. He's a masterwork. He, he, he's a master at work. And we want to be His beautiful masterpieces. One masterpiece is ready. Many masterpieces are laid down. Our fathers, they have, God has done the work in their lives and they are awaiting their reward. Now we have been worked on by God. Let's not fail. Don't let me fail you, Lord. Don't let me fall. Help me, dear Jesus. Surrender all. Keep holding to my hand. And now I say, <clears throat> not just you, Lord, but I'll keep holding to your hand from day to day. Don't let me fail you, Lord. Keep showing me the way. Keep showing me the way. I want to be beautifully broken by God. No questions asked whatsoever. No questions asked. May God bless you. May the Lord bless this message to your hearts. May the Lord bless this book to your hearts. I pray for the anointing to bless each and every one of you. Let's continue to pray for one another. Pray for the church. Pray for the for the needs in the church, Brother and Sister Tenji, they have sent their love, their greetings to all of you. They miss you and they love you and they have asked you to pray for them. Their unspoken request, let's pray for them and let's pray for the needs in the house of the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank you once again for coming. Thank you for being here today. We really appreciate you for your, for your <coughs> faithfulness, for all that you have done. It's wonderful to have all your faiths coming in. And I really appreciate the Lord for this wonderful move of the Spirit.
जे आपण सुरुवातीला एक पहिले करून ते मध्ये वाचलं की जिथे मी जायला नाही पाहिजे ते आपण करतो जिथे मी जे करायला नाही पाहिजे तेच आपण करत असतो आणि आपण देवाच्या मार्गातनं भगून आपले स्वतःचे मार्ग आपण पाहत असतो योगाला सर्व काही होत परंतु एक मार्गावर तो चालत होता की ते त्याचा स्वतःचा आत्मा त्याला स्वतःचा आत्मा हा प्रिय होता आणि कधी कधी हा स्वतःचा आत्मा तो आपल्याला मारतो दॅट किल्स आणि हेच आपल्याला नको आहे परंतु ज्यावेळेस आपल्याला हे देव आपल्यावर आपल्याला ह्या वाचनाद्वारे दाखवतो की मला हा आत्मा आवडत नाही परंतु मला न्यायीपणाचा आत्मा पाहिजे आणि तेच आपण या मंदिरात शिकत आहोत या वाचनाद्वारे हे हे जे शास्त्र आहे ना हे शास्त्र आपल्या जीवनासाठी आपल्याला मार्गदर्शन करण्यासाठी तुम्ही कुठलेही मार्ग निवडा पण जर तुम्ही हे मार्ग निवडलं तर तुम्ही देवाच्या राज्यात असणार आणि देव तुमच्या बरोबर असणार आणि देव माझ्या बरोबर असण्यासाठी मी काय करायला पाहिजे मी नाही न्यायी असा पाहिजे आय शुड बी रायचस आणि देव फक्त त्यांच्या बरोबरच असतो आपण स्तोत्राच्या एक्कावन्न अध्यामध्ये पाहिलं की देव कोणाबरोबर असतो कोण त्याला आवडतो परत इथे एक चौतीसाव्या अध्यामध्ये आपण एक दोन तीन वचन वाचूया जे आज आज आपण जे संदेश ऐकलेले त्याच्यात त्याला अगदी म्हणजे दृढ करण्यासाठी आपण इथं वाचूया पंधरावा पासून आपण वाचू मला अठराव्या वचन वाचायचं होतं पण इथं पंधराव्या वाचनापासून वाचूया यहोवाचे डोळे न्यायीच्याकडे असतात हे दोन मार्ग सोडा मी जे सुरुवातीला सांगितले आणि एकच मार्ग अवलंबन करा ते म्हणजे न्यायीपणाचा वॉक ऑन द रायचसनेस आणि ते पण स्वतःचे नाही हीच रायचसनेस त्यांनी दिलेल्या रायचसनेसवर आपण त्यांनी दिलेल्या न्यायीपणाच्या ह्याच्यावर आपण चालूया त्याचे कान त्यांच्या हाकेकडे असतात या मार्गावर तुम्ही राहून या मार्गावर तुम्ही काम करून या मार्गावर तुम्ही किती उपास केले कितीही प्रार्थना केली कितीही बायबल वाचले किती तुम्ही दान धर्म केला पण त्या मार्गाचा तो काही विचार करत नाही पण या मार्गाचा तो विचार करतो आणि या मार्गावर तुम्ही चालून ज्यावेळेस तुम्ही त्याला हात मारता तुम्ही हात मारा तो ऐकतो परमेश्वर कान देणारा परमेश्वर आहे तो हात ऐकणारा परमेश्वर आहे आणि तो प्रत्येकाचा हात ऐकत असतो तुम्ही रडत असता मनात रडत असता हाना रडत होती तिच्या हृदयात तिच्या हृदयात ती रडत होती इलाय म्हंटल तू काय प्यालेली आहेस का नाही पण तिचं हृदय परमेश्वराला माहीत होत आणि ते हृदय फुटलेलं होत भग्न होत तिने तिच्या जावेला काय ते म्हणतात तिच्या त्याला जावे म्हणतात आय डोंट नो हा ते काय असेल संवाद काय असेल तर तिच्या विरुद्ध तिने काय ती ओरडली नाही तिच्यावरती कुरकुर केली नाही तिला रागवलं नाही काही केलं नाही पण ती मनात न रडत होती देवाजवळ रडत होती आणि तो रडणं कसलं होत ब्रदर जॉयनी काय सांगितलं ब्युटिफुल ब्रोकन हार्ट सुंदर असा तो हृदय फुटलेलं होत असं साधं फुटलं नव्हतं ते पण ते सुंदर रित्या फुटलेलं एक हृदय होत होय आपण जातो संकटातनं आपण त्रासात न जातो लोक असतात आजूबाजूला पण आपण आपलं हृदय फोडून परमेश्वराजवळ हाक मरूया त्याचे कान त्याच्या हाकाकडे असतात हाकेकडे असतात यवाचे मुख वाईट करणाऱ्यांच्या विरुद्ध आहे करतात वाईट यवाचे कान त्याच्या विरुद्ध आहे यासाठी की त्यांचे स्मरण कुठनं जावं पृथ्वीतनं छेदून जावे तो आहे तो न्याय देणारा परमेश्वर आहे आपण काही काळजी करता उपयोग नाही न्यायी जनानी अरोळ केली आणि यहोवाने ती ऐकली आज का तुम्ही आज न्यायी आज आपण न्यायी आहोत का हा क्वेश्चन हा प्रश्न आपल्या प्रत्येकासाठी आपण इथं का येतो आपण इथं न्यायी होण्यासाठी येतो हे जे धडे इकडनं जात असतात त्याच्यावर विचार करूया त्याच्यावर मनन करूया ब्रदर जॉयनी दोन तीन मागच्या रविवार मध्ये आपल्या स्वभावावर आपल्या आत्म्यावर किती सुंदर सुंदर धडे आणलेले आहेत आपण काय करतो विचार करतो का त्याच्यावर मनन करतो का पुष्कळ लोकांना मला माहितीये इथे इंग्लिश समजत नाही पण माझी एक विनंती कोणीतरी ह्याला भाषांतर करावा आणि माझी एक विनंती की मोबाईल मध्ये मराठीत तुम्ही का टाकत नाही कॅन समबडी डू दॅट मराठीत टाका मला इथं सगळं कवर करता येत नाही परंतु एक तंतोतंत भाषांतर करून त्याला करो कर म्हणजे त्याला चेक करून परत मला वाटतं ब्रदर 
ब्रदर लॉरेन्स काटतात ब्रदर जीवन ब्रदर जीवनचे कधी कधी संदेश ते काटतात दोन्ही याच्यात असतात तर आपण करूया सुरुवात करूया प्रार्थना करा परमेश्वराकडे कारण हे चांगले धडे आहेत आपण याच्यावर मनन केलं ना तर खूप काय फायदा होतो आणि ह्याच्यात काय सांगते न्यायी लोकांचं आणि ते न्यायी कसं होणार बदल वैभव की आपण जर इथं असलो आपण हे वचन ऐकली आणि त्याप्रमाणे आपण राहिलो तर हे दोन मार्ग सोडून आपण न्यायीपणाच्या मार्गावर चालू शकतो आणि हे फार महत्वाचं आहे न्यायी जणांनी आरोळी केली आणि योवाने ती ऐकली व त्याच्या सर्व संकटातून त्यांना मुक्त केले संकट येतात या मार्गावर जर तुम्ही जात असता संकट आणणारे पण असतात आणि संकट पण असतात या दोन्ही मार्गातन बाहेर निघण्यासाठी तुम्ही आरोळी करा न्यायीपणाने आणि देव ऐकल जे भग्न हृदयाचे आहे त्यांच्या जवळ यहो असतो कोणाकडे असतो जे भग्न आहेत ज्यांचं अंतकरण फुटलेले त्यांच्या जवळ यहो असतो आणि जे पश्चातापी आत्म्याचे आहेत त्यांना तो तारतो आज जर तुम्हाला परमेश्वर तुमच्या जवळ असायला पाहिजे आणि जर तुम्हाला तारायला पाहिजे तर आपण भग्न हृदयाचे होऊया आणि पश्चातापी हृदयाचे होऊया आणि हाच संदेश इथं आज देला देण्यात आलेला आहे जर याच्यावर आपण मनन केलं तर आपल्याला कळेल आपले मार्ग आपण शोधूया आणि तो मार्ग आपल्याला कुठं नेतोय त्याची आपण खात्री करून घेऊया जर तुम्ही आपल्या स्वतःच्या मार्गाने जात असाल तर मग काही उपयोग नाही या चर्च पण उपयोग नाही कशाचाही उपयोग नाही तुम्ही बाहेर राहून तुम्ही चांगलं तुमचं आयुष्य एन्जॉय करू शकता पण नाही हे मार्ग जो मधला मार्ग आहे तो फार कष्टाचा आहे फार त्रासाचा आहे का आपण आपण म्हणतो ना द वे इज रफ अँड नॅरो वॉट इज दॅट स्टीप अँड रफ काटे बोजतात ज्या वेळेस आपण त्याच्यातनं जाऊ तर हे सर्व जर आपल्याला पाहिजे असेल तर त्याच्यातनं मार्ग काढूया आणि परमेश्वराची उपकारसुती करूया या दिवसासाठी या सर्व्हिससाठी प्रेरणो आणि परमेश्वराचा आपण जास्तीत जास्त प्रेर करून परमेश्वर ऐकतो ही माझी कात्री आहे ज्या ज्या वेळेस मी हाक मारली परमेश्वरांनी ऐकलेली आहे मला मी ज्या या आयुष्यातनं गेलेलो आहे ज्या आज माझं वय आहे त्या आयुष्यातनं मी खूप खूप काय मी केलेले पण प्रत्येक वेळेस मी परमेश्वर जवळ हाक मारलेली आणि परमेश्वर दयाळू आहे आणि प्रत्येक वेळेस मला मदत केलेली आहे आणि आज मी जे तुमच्या समोर बघा की त्याच्या इच्छेप्रमाणे कोणाची इच्छेप्रमाणे नाही माझी पण इच्छा नाही आहे पण त्याची जर इच्छा असेल ना तो इथं ठेवल मला मला माहितीये फिर परमेश्वर सगळं करत असतो त्याच्या हातात सगळं असतो पण जे काय आपण प्रार्थना करतो ते आपण न्यायीपणाने करूया Let us do righteously, not with unrighteously. Amen? So, we are going to give you all the permission to give you the permission. Permission to give you the permission. We are going to give you the permission to give you the permission. Amen?